fabulous fourth graders. Today we're going to talk about insulators and conductors. So when we talk about an insulator, we're going to be talking about the opposite of a conductor, which is an insulator. So obviously a conductor is going to be the opposite of an insulator. An insulator opposes the flow of electricity. Insulators are important to keep us safe from electricity. So the wire that carries electricity to your computer or television is covered with a rubber-like insulator that protects you from getting electrocuted. Good insulators can include glass, the air, and potentially paper. A conductor, an electrical conductor, allows electric current to flow easily because of the makeup of their atoms in a conductor, the outer electrons of the atom are loosely bound and can freely move through the material when electric charge is applied. Color changing paper is a lot of fun to play with because it's paper that changes colors. And that's not normal, but you can use it to do science too. For example, you can use it to learn whether objects are insulators or conductors. Insulators are things that heat doesn't move through very well, like the cardboard sleeves on paper cups of hot chocolate. Conductors are the opposite. They allow heat to move through them easily, like metals. You can probably find insulators and conductors all around your home or classroom. Here's a quick experiment that you can do to figure out which is which. You'll need some heat sensitive paper and also five small objects made of different materials like coins, scraps of paper, small plastic toys. I picked out a few. We've got a SciShow keychain, a piece of cardboard, a fossilized shark's tooth. I honestly don't know what we're going to get from this one. Once you have everything ready, set your five objects down on your heat sensitive paper. Then take a second to write down a prediction. What objects do you think will make good conductors and why? Sometimes making predictions can just feel like extra unnecessary work because you just want to know what happens at the end of the experiment and you're going to know by the end. But predictions are important because they give you a chance to think about why things happen. And if you're wrong, you can think about why you were wrong. For example, I honestly don't know how good of a thermal conductor this shark's tooth is going to be. It's made of stone because it's fossilized. So it's dense and it feels heavy and I can feel its coolness on my hand in a way I couldn't with like styrofoam, a really good insulator. But I don't know, stone, is that gonna be a good conductor? I have my theories. Now it's time to see what's gonna happen. One at a time with the object on the paper, place your fingers on the object, making sure not to touch the paper. After 30 seconds, you can check to see if the paper underneath the object has changed colors. If it has, your object is probably a pretty good conductor. If it hasn't changed colors, you can always put your finger back on the object and wait a little longer because maybe your object is a conductor, but not like a great one. Let's see what our SciShow keychain did. Oh, a little bit of an impression there, but not so much as I was expecting, honestly. What about this penny? Think. We're going to count to 30 now, see what happens. Are you going to sit with me the whole time? Let's, make, let's do a cut. And my penny, my penny has definitely made a much more distinctive impression than my SciShow keychain has. And finally, the moment of truth for my shark's tooth. Not much. My plastic toy and my cardboard circle. Nothing. So what do we think it is then about these different materials that makes them better or worse conductors of heat? We can think about that. Maybe also do some research on it. Thank you for experimenting with me. All right, kiddos, so I want you to head to your Google Classroom. For your exit ticket today, you're going to give one example of a material that would be used as an insulator, and you're going to give two examples of materials that would be used as conductors. So put your thinking cap on. You should have seen some within this video, but if you'd like to do your own research, just as he mentioned, all the more power to you. I would love for you to find as many insulators and conductors as possible. Happy hunting.